precisely where the regular brigade would have had their, their men. Uh, we're talking seven, 8,000 men uh, brought over uh, mostly from what the initial assault force was going to be uh, towards the McFadden farm area. And uh, I didn't know this coming in about four years ago when I started doing this. You see the movies where they're all just walking constantly kind of into a wall, but they weren't all that ridiculous all the time. Uh, it was not uncommon for them to be laying down until they were ready to actually fight. Um, and you would hear a battalion rise up, and uh, that meant get up and be ready to fire. Um, a lot of time they would get back down on the ground to reload uh, if they had a lot of hot fire coming over their heads. Um, these guys had survival instincts, so it wasn't, wasn't all ridiculous. Now, what happened here was they kind of took them by surprise. Uh, the woods over there, a little out of range for a 58 caliber Springfield, um, accurate-wise. So they laid down here on the ground for a little while, uh, let the Confederates come up, and uh, one of the guys in the Union describes it as looking like a sea of gray, uh, wave after wave, and they're letting their artillery do most of the damage. Uh, they're basically here to clean up the, the guys that actually get through uh, close enough, but uh, they never get beyond this line. This is about as close as the Confederates ever get, uh, and if they do get this close, all of a sudden you have 7,000 Union infantrymen rise up from this depression, and uh, you're then cut down by, by Benny Balls. So this is where the Union line, we are walking it right now as we speak, um, and it will extend uh, far beyond uh, the woods that we were in to begin the tour with. Um, so yeah, it, it is well well in front of where the road was. Uh, the, the paintings are not exactly accurate, um, but we do know that they were in the center.